Good day students, welcome again to our virtual class. This time, let's talk about the different web pages in the World Wide Web. But first, let's understand what does World Wide Web mean. World Wide Web is another way to describe the internet, which is a network of computers which are connected and that share information and allow communication around the world. Now Web 1.0, or also known as Static Web Page, was the first web page used when the World Wide Web was invented. Its feature is just a stationary. The page is as is and cannot be manipulated by the user. The content is also the same for all the users. However, the World Wide Web is more than just static pages. Pretty soon, Web 2.0 came to the picture. Web 2.0 is the evolution of Web 1.0. It is a dynamic web page, where in here, the user is able to see a website differently than others. Example for Web 2.0 includes social networking sites, blogs, wikis, video sharing sites, hosted services, and web applications. Web 2.0 allows users to interact with the page. Instead of just reading a page, the user may be able to comment or create a user account. Web 2.0 allows users to use web browsers instead of just using their operating system. Browsers can now be used for their user interface, application software, and even for file storage. Most websites that we visit today are Web 2.0. This time, let's talk about the features of Web 2.0. The key features of Web 2.0 includes First, Foxonomy. It allows users to categorize and classify or arrange information using freely chosen keywords. Example of this, tagging. Popular social networking sites such as Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and others use tags that start with the pound sign. This is also referred as hashtag. Number two is rich user experience. Here, Content is dynamic and is responsive to users' input. An example would be a website that shows local content. In the case of social networking sites, when logged on, your account is used to modify what you see in their website. Third, user participation. The owner of the website is not only the one who is able to put content. Others are able to place a content of their own by means of comments, reviews, and evaluation. Some websites allow readers to comment on the article, participate in a poll, or review a specific product, example of this, Amazon.com, and other online stores. Number 4. Long Tail Services that are offered on demand rather than on a time-based purchase. In certain cases, time-based pricing is better than file-sized-based pricing, or vice versa. This is synonymous to subscribing to a data plan that charges you for the amount of time you spend in the internet or a data plan that charges you for the amount of bandwidth you used. Number 5. Software as a Service Users will subscribe to a software only when needed rather than purchasing them. This is a cheaper option if you do not always need to use a software. For instance, Google Docs is a free web-based application that allows the user to create and edit word processing and spreadsheet documents online. When you need a software like a word processor, you can purchase it for a one-time huge amount and install it in your computer, and it is yours forever. Software as a service allows you to rent a software for a minimal fee. Number 6. Mass Participation Diverse information sharing through universal web access since most users can use the internet. Web 2.0's content is based on people from various cultures. Well, that's all for today. I hope you learned something about Web 1.0 and Web 2.0. And by the way, if you find this video helpful and informative, don't forget to leave a like and comment. And also, make sure to subscribe also in my channel so that you will be notified every time I publish my latest video.